All right, California Congressman Daryl Issa is urging the Department of Justice to open an investigation into Black Lives Matter, the group which is supposed to be giving back to black communities. The calls are coming after New York Magazine revealed this week that the BLM secretly bought a $6 million mansion and never disclosed it to the public. The mansion was originally sold to a BLM associate in October of 2020 for $3.1 million. Then that associate sold the property to BLM for 5.8 million bucks. That's nearly double the price in just a matter of days. And there seems to be no explanation for the price hike. BLM also paid cash for the mansion. For more on this, let's welcome in the founding partner of Dillon Law Group, Harmeet Dillon. Harmeet is also the CEO of the Center for American Liberty. Harmeet, good to see you. Uh, BLM says they bought the, um, the mansion to be used as a creative campus and safe house for the group. Um, the One of the co-founders released a statement um, saying that the story in New York Magazine, because New York Magazine, I'm sure, is uh, some conservative rag, which you know, doesn't really make sense. Uh, it's, a, it's a racist and sexist attack. Um, I don't understand, like, how an organization like this is dedicated supposedly to helping the folks in the black movement is, is saying that they need a mansion as a campus. Well, Sean, thanks for having me and for asking about this. This is deeply disturbing, and I say this as somebody with extensive experience with nonprofits. So first of all, there are a host of regulations at the state and the federal level that need to be complied with respect to how these funds are used. But secondly, there is setting aside the nonprofit issue, there are tons of indicia of self-dealing and enrichment of the BLM founders and leaders at the expense of their donors and at the expense of uh, public transparency. And so, of course, in this type of a scandal among the liberal elite, you also have the law firm Perkins Coie involved in setting up the LLC that was used to transfer this property at double the price that it had been sold at a few days earlier. And that itself is about 2.5 times the value of properties in the neighborhood, in this multi-million dollar neighborhood. When you dig in further, at Sean, not just uh, with respect to um, what has been reported so far, but when you look in the details from some organizations like the Intelligence or another non-conservative outfit that's dug into this, you find that in addition to these real estate transactional costs, you also see large sums being paid to so-called groundskeepers and maintenance and security. These people happen to be related by marriage or related by family or related by uh, 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 baby daddy relationships to some of the founders of BLM. And so these are really disturbing to the point where even a lot of supporters of BLM, including families that are supposed to have benefited from this organization because they were uh, you know, on the receiving side of uh, alleged police brutality, they're complaining that this organization is betraying its purpose and not fulfilling its promises. Okay, so Harmi, Congressman Daryl Issa, as Sean mentioned, is urging the Justice Department to open investigation to this. But what are the legal ramifications that actually could happen to BLM? Let's say they lose their nonprofit status, but in the end, what reper repercussions do they have to pay for? Well, as I mentioned, both state and federal law should apply here. So California uh, Attorney General governs nonprofits and this particular transaction occurred in California. The California Attorney General has also indicated this organization is delinquent. So for example, they could lose their ability to raise funds uh, in various states. They could lose it at the federal level as well. If they have engaged in fraud, wire fraud, mail fraud, misrepresentations to regulators or to the public, they could face forfeiture, they could face criminal penalties as well. And by the way, this is not just in the United States. They're doing the same thing in Canada in a Canadian affiliate of Black Lives Matters there. So I think there are going to be a lot of people, including those who are supporters of the cause of BLM, who are very concerned about the money going into the pockets of friends and family of these founders, as well as for them to live a very lavish lifestyle that the average person who they're supposed to be benefiting cannot possibly afford. So, so let me ask you, where's the line between icky and illegal, like why, why, I mean, I get it. Like the, it doubled in price and you mentioned a bunch of these people on the payroll. I get it, it looks un unseemly, it's, it's probably improper, but where's that line between that and illegal? Well, uh, you know, there are restrictions under IRS guidelines as well as state law regarding the fact that nonprofit funds are not to be used to personally enrich 
the uh, organization's officers or employees. And so, you know, we've seen a couple of conservative organizations get in trouble for similar things. And I think rightfully so, because when you're giving to a nonprofit, it's a public purpose. And, and that money is not meant to be used for the private benefit of the individuals. It's meant to be used for the approved public purpose. It can't even be used for a public purpose that's different than the purpose that is approved by the IRS and, uh, and the incorporating state. So I do think that here they have crossed the line. Um, you know, even saying publicly that this is, at the one hand, a safe house, which is supposed to be a secret, private place, which people can't get to, at the same time using that same venue for filming cooking demonstrations and for self-serving promotion of the founders who live there or spend time there, these are at odds with each other. And they recognize that because the fact that they have all this public scrutiny has been leaked in an internal memo that they're very concerned about a cover story for what they're doing and trying to hush it up, kill stories, compile dossiers on journalists. This is not the activity right. of somebody who's simply crossing the line. Okay. Harmeet Dillon, good to see you as always. Thank you for breaking this down for us. My pleasure.